In 2010, Tesla was trading at $17 a share. And I'm guessing you're just like me, and you didn't pull the trigger 13 years ago to buy the stock. It just so happens that we are all getting that second chance to invest in something on the ground floor. The market share for artificial intelligence is expected to be at $2 trillion by the year 2030. That's a compounding annual growth rate of 37%. If you invested $100,000 today and had a 37% CAGR for the next seven years, you'd have just shy of $1 million. That makes this an extremely exciting time to experience AI firsthand, and I think the potential for investments are going to be incredible. I recently did a video on the top AI stock, and I'm following that up with today's video of the top 10 AI ETF. And I get it that individual stock may be a little bit too risky for many of you, and ETF will provide you the variety of companies to provide massive growth, but also diverse enough to minimize your risk. In today's list of top ETF, I'm going to start off by stating that I'm certain to have skipped over an ETF that you may have felt was a better AI choice. And if that's the case, please share your ETF in the comments down below for everyone else to see. With regards to my criteria for choosing the top AI ETF, I tried to select a variety that aren't duplicates of one another. And when I did have a tie of a near identical ETF, I chose the one with the lower expense ratio. And like many of my videos, I do have a link to a spreadsheet that shows all 24 ETF that I was researching for this video with updated stock prices and year-to-date performances for you to use as you like. I'll jump right in with my first ETF of Round Hill Ball Metaverse ETF, where the strategy is to offer exposure to companies that will help define the metaverse, create entertainment within that ecosystem, and provide infrastructure to build it. I think that the name and the reference to the metaverse can be a bit of a turnoff to many people because the metaverse has been a complete lackluster term for investment. But please don't let the name fool you. This is made up of strong companies that will fuel both AI and the proverbial metaverse. With regards to the infrastructure part of the ETF strategy, it relies heavily on NVIDIA, which we know is a powerhouse in designing graphics cards. But they also have partnerships with Microsoft designing AI-powered virtual machines, and Amazon's AWS has partnered with NVIDIA for over a decade for its machine learning solutions. In looking at the top 10 holdings for this ETF, you'll notice that it isn't like every other technology ETF out there, which typically has Apple and Microsoft as the top two slots over and over again. I like that it has a variety of companies like Roblox, Tencent, and Sony, which tie into the gaming and entertainment sectors to give this ETF some much needed variety. With regards to performance, the Round Hill Ball Metaverse ETF has only been around for two years, but the year-to-date performance is a respectable 27.8%, with a total holdings of only 52 companies, which makes it one of the less diverse ETF that I'm going to cover today, and its expense ratio is slightly above my top 10 average at 0.59%. This choice is a little bit riskier than all of my other ETF today, because it isn't as diverse as most, and it does have several companies that could have large swings, whether it be positive or negative. But I do like that it offers a different set of top 10 holdings from most all other tech ETF. The next fund on my list is the iShares US Tech Breakthrough Multi-Sector ETF, where the strategy is to invest in index of US companies looking at technological breakthroughs in robotics, AI, cloud computing, cybersecurity, financial, and genomics and immunology. I love the broad scope of this ETF strategy, and I believe that it truly hits on the key sectors that stand to benefit the most from AI and major breakthroughs in technology. In looking at the top 10 holdings, it holds true that it has a nice set of variety where companies like Salesforce is towards the top, where they specialize in CRM, or customer relationship management software, where they have over 20% market share. They have had AI solutions for several years under the name Salesforce Einstein, where I'm certain clients will have a much stronger interest now that AI is so pervasive today. In addition to Salesforce, I like that this ETF has Regeneron Pharmaceuticals in its top 10 because I see this sector as having great potential from AI. As Regeneron states on their website that they have massive improvements in dataset analysis and faster pipelines for data review. And by leveraging machine learning, they can accelerate potential therapies and increasing productivity by over tenfold, which brings us that much closer to finding cures for some of our worst diseases. With regards to performance, this ETF has a year-to-date performance of 21.7%, with a total holding of 184 companies, which makes its diversity, well, roughly about average. And its expense ratio is pleasantly below my top 10 average at 0.4%. 
This ETF is also very similar to the Global X AI and Technology ETF, symbol AIQ. But I chose the iShare ETF because it had a much better expense ratio by 28 basis points. Before moving on, I have a favor to ask of you. If you like my content, I'd greatly appreciate if you consider pressing the like button so my content here on YouTube can grow. And better yet, I'd love it if you'd consider subscribing so you can be up to date with all of my latest content. The third ETF today is the Global X Robotics and AI ETF, where they are investing in AI, automation, and industrial robotics. When you look at the top 10 holdings for this ETF, the list, like most of my ETF choices, are fairly unique. Where the top company is Intuitive Surgical, and they develop automated solutions and robots for the medical sector. Where they happen to have full surgical systems like Da Vinci that provide robot-assisted technology to make surgical work more precise and efficient. As to the performance, this fund has a year-to-date performance of 23.9%, with a total holdings of 298 companies, which happens to make this the most diverse of all of the ETF that I'm going to cover today. And its expense ratio is at 0.69%. The two key items that I like about this ETF is that it has a global set of holdings to give my portfolio an international mix. And I like that it has a larger subset of holdings, which also gives me added diversity, which is definitely something that I want from a fund that has a global mix. The fourth ETF today is the First Trust NASDAQ Artificial Intelligence and Robotics ETF. And when you look at the top 10 holdings, there should be very few companies on this list that you recognized, where this ETF has several leading defense companies. The top holdings during the taping of this video was with Air environment which develops autonomous drones and weapon systems that have become household names in the past year and I happen to believe that that demand on these types of systems will certainly grow over time another top holding is with a company called kinetic that is similar but it makes robotics for the defense sector that are utilized on the ground not the air and there may be some people out there that have zero desire to invest in any form of defense company and that's perfectly appropriate I merely want to showcase AI ETF that cover multiple sectors to give each of you a little bit more knowledge for your investment options. This fund has a year-to-date performance of 14.2%, which happens to be the lowest of the ETF that I'm going to be reviewing today, and it does have a total holdings of 113 companies. And its expense ratio is at 0.65%. There are two key items that I like about this ETF, and the first is that it has a unique subset of companies that are leveraging AI much differently than the big tech companies. And the second aspect is that it's touching on sectors that aren't common in all other ETF. Today's fifth ETF is Invesco NASDAQ Internet ETF, where the top 10 holdings are more of what you would expect from an AI portfolio, with the key players being Meta, Google, Microsoft, and Amazon. This fund has the largest percentage of Meta and Amazon in the top 10 holdings of any other ETF that I'm covering today, where Meta happens to own Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Oculus VR. Meta began leaning in heavily to AI with regards to its ads platform and its reels that play on its social networks, which caused for a nice boost in its profits in Q1 of this year. And as for Amazon, which does happen to be my prior employer, they are leveraging AI to create tools like Code Whisperer to assist programmers in writing code on the fly. In addition, AWS has a program called Bedrock to offer billion dollar AI models to be used generally by its AWS customers to create their own set of AI tools and analytics. Overall, this fund has some big tech companies that are poised to milk that proverbial AI cash cow for the next decade. As for performance, this ETF has a year-to-date performance of 24.9% and has a total holdings of 85 companies, with an expense ratio of only 0.6%. This ETF is sort of the bread and butter of companies that you would expect in an AI fund, but I like that they have the top 50% of its holdings across seven different companies, and Apple isn't one of them. The sixth ETF is Invesco QQQ Trust Series 1 ETF. Now, there are parts of me that really don't want to like this fund because they market it so much. But at the end of the day, it's a solid ETF where you can see by the top holdings that it's the usual suspects of high-tech companies that are poised for strong growth in AI. The year-to-date performance is at 23.8% across 102 companies, and it has an expense ratio of 0.2%, which happens to be one of the lowest expense ratios of all the funds that I'm reviewing today. And that happens to be a key reason why it made the list over other funds, because it has a solid performance without all the fees. Next is the Innovator Deepwater Frontier Tech ETF, whose main purpose is to find emerging companies that will have breakout performances in robotics and AI. 
which explains why many of the top 10 companies aren't seen as common holdings for any other ETF that I cover today. Some of the top holdings are with controversial gaming companies, which may come with a little bit of a higher risk. The year-to-date performance is at 18.3% across 113 total companies, and it has an expense ratio of 0.7%. Look, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This is one of my least favorite ETF on the list today because of its heavy exposure in the gaming industry, and also the fact that it has the highest expense ratio out of all of the ETF. But there may be some of you out there that stand behind the companies that it's investing in, and you may see it as a strong option for you and your portfolio. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. My eighth option today is the iShares Global Tech ETF, where nearly 50% of the holdings are between Apple and Microsoft, which makes this fund very much vanilla. But I do love that it has ASML holdings and Taiwan Semiconductor in the top list because I do see them both as key stock to have for AI growth. And as a reminder, ASML Holdings is a Dutch company that makes the extreme ultraviolet lithography machines. And these machines are what allows chip manufacturers to continue to make chips at ever-increasing capacity while reducing them in size. ASML Holdings is one of the few companies to make these types of machines. And with chip makers like Nvidia seeing incredible growth, along with the recent legislation to bring more chip manufacturing to the states, the equipment like EUV will be in high demand for many years to come. With regards to performance, this ETF is at 23.7% year to date across 114 companies, where the expense ratio is nice and low at 0.4%. Now moving on to my ninth ETF of iShares US Technology ETF, which I see as a great foundational ETF for the AI space with the top holdings being in companies like Microsoft, Alphabet, Nvidia, and Meta. And as a quick reminder, Alphabet is the parent company to Google where they've been working to incorporate AI in many of their services like Search, Photos, Maps, and Translate. And they recently announced their latest AI model called Palm 2, which happens to be strong in math, coding, and language translation. They also have a chatbot called Bard, which they plan to launch more broadly to compete with the likes of ChatGPT. This ETF has the highest performance year-to-date out of all the ETF today, where it's up 29.3% year-to-date across 139 companies. And the expense ratio is nice and low at 0.39%. This fund has also been around long enough to have a five-year return of 17.9%. This happens to be an all-around workhorse ETF that should do very well with its AI coverage at least over the next decade. Before covering that last ETF, I do want to remind you that I do have all the funds that I covered today and 14 more that are in a spreadsheet with details about their performance, which they do update daily and it has links for you to research them further. I also have a separate tab that calls out the top 10 holdings for each fund so that you can compare them each as you like. And with that covered, let's move on to the last ETF today, which is SPDR Select Sector Fund Technology which is also heavy in Apple and Microsoft, but they do have a nice spread of Nvidia, Salesforce, Adobe, and Oracle. The reason that the fund made the list is because it has been managed extremely well for several years. When you look at the performance year to date, they are up 24.2% across only 66 companies. But what I like most is that it only has an expense ratio of 0.1%, which is a far better expense ratio than any other fund on the list today. Granted, the performance isn't the highest year to date of the entire group. However, it does have the highest five year performance at 19.5%. And like I said earlier, it's been managed well over time, and it's proven to be a very solid choice for the AI space. I would love to hear from you in the comments below if there's a different fund that you felt that I had missing from the top 10 list. And please keep in mind that I have that spreadsheet down below with all of the different funds that I've been researching for this video. I hope that you found some value in today's video, and thanks for watching.